Il y a un switch in French. Euh, pour vous dire que... Euh, As I was saying, we are all used to this exercise, but this one exercise is uh, very special because, as uh, the Commissioner has said, it is part, well, it comes at a, a time of crisis, this pandemic. And everybody knows that uh, these trends are speeding up. We've anticipated these trends. Obviously, the work on this subject began before the coronavirus crisis, but trends have now accelerated. When it comes to the uh, Commission and the EU as a whole, uh, we're basing ourselves on uh, three things. First of all, we are going through an unprecedented transition period. This obviously has industrial, economic and social uh, consequences. We're seeing a green transition with a green deal and a digital transition, which, of course, is also very important in terms of its uh, social impact. That's what we saw during the crisis, after all. Everybody understands now what the role of platforms are and the role of uh, the information society. But it obviously has a serious impact on uh, the economy and innovation. Those two pillars are very important. And then, of course, there's the issue of uh, resilience. We've been saying this now for a few months, that uh, we we're not naive. We understand what the challenges are. We are a uh, continent which wants to negotiate, which wants to uh, develop equal partnerships with the uh, great powers of this world, other continents, and that is the background uh, to what we're trying to do today. The digital transition and the green transition, as Marsha said, require enormous amounts of uh, raw materials. The public aren't always aware of this. And these uh, critical uh, raw materials are very important. Maros talked about lithium for batteries. We also need uh, rare earths as well. Uh, we need uh, semiconductors as well, made of critical materials. So there are good news, there's good news and there's less good news. But we're trying to take a very serene and professional approach to all of this. As Marsha said, in a globalized world, we must uh, find partnerships. The world has globalized. It will continue uh, to be that way. We have lots and lots of uh, companies which supply us with uh, materials. So sometimes we uh, get our raw materials uh, just from one place. Other sources are rather more diversified. But there are lots of these materials which are actually in Europe. Obviously, there are constraints when it comes to mining and extraction. We have to take account of the environment, biodiversity. Uh, we have the highest standards in this area in Europe, and we will continue to uphold those standards. They're very important for us. But we've got uh, bauxite, uh, germanium, tantalum, tungsten, indium, beryllium, gallium. We have many uh, bauxite as well. We have uh, many sources in Europe, borat as well. Marosh talks about lithium, but we do have lithium resources, in fact, in Europe. Uh, during our seminar yesterday, you were talking about this. We're trying to position ourselves for 2025 so that we can produce enough lithium ourselves for batteries by then. So we can do a lot in Europe. We're an open continent. We have our resources. We have um, a plan. We, have a, we will monitor what our resources are. We use uh, Copernicus also to monitor our resources. We're trying to drop a map, in fact, at the moment, a type of a mapping exercise. That's one of the 10 proposals that we'll be all, uh, talking about today. We can talk a little bit more about that if you want uh, during the question and answer session. So we do have quite good knowledge about what our needs are, in fact, very good knowledge about what our needs are, and uh, Marisha services are working on all of that. 
So we're trying to stay green and uh, introduce this uh, digital transition. And as I say, we have a clear idea of what our resources are, but they're uh, not enough. So we need to establish partnerships uh, with others. We have partnerships which exist already, for example, with Canada or Australia, with various African countries. So those partnerships will be developed because, once again, we know what our needs are. So that's the first uh, part of what I wanted to say. First of all, a proper idea of what we need for the transition and the fact that our needs are increasing. It's very important to have a state of play and understand what resources we have in Europe and start thinking about investment, financial tools which will support these investments, start thinking about the rules which we need to put in place when it comes to extraction, mining, bearing in mind biodiversity, bearing in mind the environment. And, of course, all of that is part of today's package. And then, of course, we need to make sure that we have good negotiating capacity with all of our uh, suppliers who aren't Europe who aren't in Europe, and make sure that they are able to export materials to us. Another very important point, and this is important in the context of uh, the recovery plan as well, and of course uh, we will be looking at this against the background of all the uh, points that I'm making. In fact, yesterday we had a day-long uh, seminar with President von der Leyen. Uh, and what we're trying to do is prepare well for the recovery uh, plans which will be put forward by the member states in the next few weeks and these will be uh, these will be examined in the light of the digital transition and the green deal against the background of those two important uh, subjects and of course in the light of resilience as well I presented on the 10th of March, the industrial strategy. I'm so sure you'll recall that. That's very important for us. And there we talked a lot about circular economy. And that's something which we want to talk about a lot, because uh, another piece of good news is that uh, many of these materials can be recycled. You don't necessarily have to uh, throw out the whole product. You can recycle the rare earth elements or you can recycle the raw materials used in them. And this is a whole industry. You need expertise to do this. Sometimes you can recycle things two or three or four uh, times, in fact. And we are now operating in an economy where um, we won't just be talking, in fact, about recycling. We'll be talking about a fully circular economy. And we want to be the first a green continent. We want to be host to the uh, largest suppliers of uh, green technology. We want to be uh, a digital continent through all the investments that the member states will make and will help them make. And we want to be the most important con continent when it comes to the circular economy as well. That's absolutely crucial. And that's something else which we can uh, talk about later. We want to be more independent as well in all these areas. And we are working on this. Maros uh, referred to the alliance, which will be launching at the end of the month. And of course, we want to involve in this alliance everybody who shares... Um, who has a stake in this whole endeavour. So critical suppliers, companies which recycle, or companies who wish to increase their recycling capacities, and of course NGOs as well, they have their word to say. And we want to really be exemplary and a leader in terms of extraction uh, capacity. And there we need to bring stakeholders on board as well. We're going to develop this savoir-faire. It's very important for us, very important for suppliers as well, everyone along the supply chain. Well, we're not just working uh, for Europe here. If we have European supply chains, we still want to make sure that everyone can benefit from our savoir-faire and our uh, 
how, how our high standards and the way in which uh, we use our resources and materials. So trade unions will also be part of this alliance. The regions as well. We have uh, many European regions involved in this. I've got a map here which lists the raw materials which we have and the production sites. There are quite a few of them. And we obviously want to make sure that these sites are in line with uh, the required standards. So we're not quite there yet, but we are positioning ourselves to make sure that we can meet our needs. Now, all these stakeholders that I mentioned will be part of the alliance. They'll be invited to participate in this European Raw Materials Alliance. As I say, we'll be launching that in a few days' time, at the end of the month. Now, I don't want to go into lots of detail on the measures now. And I think you've uh, been given them in your files. We can come back to that, but retain perhaps the uh, following. I think we've done very well in evaluating what our resources are and what our needs are. I don't know of any other continent which has done so well here. We're aiming for a double transition. The um, digital economy and the Green Deal. We're trying to understand what is happening in Europe, what resources we have, and how we can extract them, and what investments need to be made. We have also evaluated all the global suppliers. We've evaluated all our, our partners in our partner countries. And we're trying to diversify rather more so that we don't end up too dependent we don't end up in a situation of excessive dependence because we want to be as resilient as we can, so that means we must diversify. Now, we have quite a lot of uh, money available for uh, commission, the Commission's uh, programmes, but as Maros has said, this is a particular moment in uh, European history, in fact, in, in global history, in, in terms of the economy. We're waiting for the recovery plans now. We need to examine them. And, of course, this is a great opportunity. We will grasp this opportunity and make sure that we are able to finance the measures that we are uh, laying out. Thank you.